Hello everyone, and welcome back to the ToonCon coverage. I was actually really enamored with the con so much so that I forgot that the panel for Marty Grabstein and Jeff Bennett was going on. I quickly ran over to that, recorded the footage that I could, and then hustled back to the con itself, a room over. I actually got to speak to Jeff Bennett in person, I didn't record it, but he was a very nice guy and I thanked him for his Bionicle and Hero Factory coverage. I also hung out with Marty Grabstein for a long time, even after I got my photo taken with him. And that was really fun, it was a great experience. And he's a really warming, swell, kind man. And I'm just really happy to spend that time with him. So without further ado, here's the interview. Osmonds were on there at one point. Oh, we had, had some we had Farrah Fawcett. That's, and that's, that's, that's kind of a long story and not, not the best, but uh, <laughs> the story. she was very, very late. <laughs> and and I, I was waiting around because I was like so excited to meet Farrah Fawcett. But then, it's <laughs> live. Um, so, it, yeah, this is live? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back over there. Yeah, no, not, right? I'll just say, <laughs> she went in the restroom for a very long time and didn't come out. Ever. And I had to go in and get her, and her kid was skateboarding for the hallway. <laughs> And then when they finally got her, she was she was very happy to work and 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 very very ready to work. But that was that was maybe as obscure as it got. I'm trying to think of who else was. It, I mean, Adam West wasn't really obscure. No, but I mean to, to those. But he was my favorite. So what was that experience like? with Did Adam West? Yeah. I could barely keep a straight face. I mean, I, I couldn't do my lines because he was cracking me up so much. I guess all I had to do was say, he, he said, uh, I can't remember what my line was to him, but then he said, Johnny, you <laughs> still find your mama. <laughs> and I was just like, I was, I was, I was toast after that. I couldn't, I couldn't work. Every line I tried to do, I was just like, I can't look at you and do this show anymore. Because it was, you know, he was so good at the tongue in cheek. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I like to start the panel off with the fact that voice actors, we're just like you. Um, Jeff and Marty both have uh, shared a little bit of where they got started. Obviously, we're here to celebrate them, so let's give them a round of applause. As <laughs> The things I do for. Oh, oh you want me to say the word? You can you can fill it The things I do for. Money? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's love! Love! <laughs> things yeah. I do for mom! That's a thing. <laughs> what you sure how the game goes? There are no rules. Well, that's from an obscure sound in the seven. Oh, there you go. There you go. It works. Okay, just be sure. From an obscure. Broadway musical of, of the 70s. Yeah. No, early 80s. Wait, chorus line. 80s. Oh, what I did for love? Yeah. Chorus line. What I did for love. Is that, re is that a line. reference to chorus line? Yes, no, yes it is, absolutely. Who would have thought? Absolutely. The Who would have thought I did get it? Can regret line. what yeah. I did. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, nihilism! 
Um, <laughs> my career. So, uh, who's yours? Okay. Do the blank with me. Monkey, baby. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to do it. Very short, but Johnny, I like that. Johnny, 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 Because it, it was an actual The monkey band, was a right? dance in the 60s. It, it was one of the, the, one of the bitch films. Do you remember? Yeah, but I was... See, he's getting a little feisty. My, my is like the professor you had in college. But anyways, <laughs> what is it in two? Do you remember A uh, Hard Day's Night, the movie yeah, with the Beatles, right? The Beatles. The Hard Day's Night, the movie version, what? black and white. Yeah. There's a moment when you see them dancing in a dance club. And Ringo's going like this. <laughs> right, remember this? That's the right. monkey. That's the dance, the monkey. And the somewhere monkey. along the way, I, they did have a Johnny Bravo line dance like that. Did anybody see that on YouTube? Like back in the day, they had people like Were going along outside of pools with everybody doing the monkey. What? Oh yeah, wait. It could look like something else, but it was the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only saw it once, but I didn't see it again on YouTube. Yeah. Did you want this question to go on as long as it just did? Absolutely. Long. Yeah. <laughs> you said the Beatles. Tell me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about that. Well, so here's the house for a second. Uh, so we're obviously talking about you know creative forces. You both worked on shows that were so centered around a creator's vision. Obviously, Van Particle created John Bravo, uh, and John Dilworth created Kurt's Cowardly Dog. Can we talk a little bit about like what is it like to be the iconic characters that these visionaries are trusting? You are not just the, the, the namesake of the entire show, but you're working with people with such distinct visions. Yeah. So, Marty, can I start with you? What was sure. that like? Well, uh, I guess I should. Should I talk in here or is this it's better? Do, do we like this or do we like this? Which is better? This or this? You like that? Oh my. You don't need have a proper vote, actually. I just no, don't know. No, I don't. <laughs> You know, maybe I'll just I'll split the difference and I'll go like this. How about that? Anyway, working with John Dilworth, well, first of all, the idea of getting that role, which was just mind-boggling, and I was so unbelievably grateful for having, you know, the, actually a friend of mine reached out to me, a really good friend, who I had not seen for maybe five years. Such a good friend, I didn't see him for five years. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so she, you know, reached out to me and said, you know, I'm, I'm working with this guy, John Dilworth. Uh, he's a very odd guy, she said this. Uh, and he's right in the process of creating a new cartoon series, Guardians of Cowardly Dog. And he's listened to every voiceover artist in the city and he can't seem to arrive. You might even, you might even audition for it. I might have. Yeah, it's Do probably. Do you remember auditioning for it? No. No, okay. No. Listen, <laughs> don't patronize me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, who is, who is? <laughs> call, call a New York Jew. I think it, I think it, it speaks to me of New York Jewish <laughs> It does, it yeah. does. Yeah. So she called me up and she said, let's see, because he, listened to over 300 voices. Finally, he, you know, she brought me in and within five minutes, uh, it, it just seemed to work. But I will tell you, so I got the job, which was amazing, right? Now, you know, he was wild and I, you know, so warm and loving, but also very eccentric, very unusual. And there was an intensity behind his eyes, you know, like, a, like some, a lot was going on there. So, you know, when, when I, I had no idea how to interpret this thing, I, you know, I just started doing it and, and it seemed to just be work for him. But all of a sudden I knew I was on board something special because I actually got pretty early on that this was a wonderful message. Somehow the idea of this terrified little creature who's afraid of everything, so much so that people enjoy the way he screamed and the way he did all that stuff, right? And yet somehow, when push came to shove, he reached up and found his courage and, and saved the world. So he faced his fears and his anxieties and went ahead and did things anyway and made a difference. So I felt like I was onto something, you know, I was associated with something very special just from that message alone. But the odd, wild kinds of unusual interpret, you know, 
very strange. Every you didn't know always know what you were gonna get in from one episode to the next exactly, except for the basics. But all these other things, music, uh, weird, weird. It, it was. I felt honored to be a part of such a such a such a project. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great answer. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Sir. Jack. Yeah. I, well, with with Van, I, you know, it was like he was he was kind of like me as a child of the '70s. So he he wanted to get all those elements in on one show. And I, he told me initially that his brother had a um, alternate persona, sort of like his little Superman, which he called him Johnny Bravo. And he would look in the mirror and say things and do things, and, and it was just kind of like this character that he made up. And it was, and I think at the same time, wasn't a Brady Bunch had like a... The, there was, yeah. There was a Johnny Bravo? Yes, or like on Brady Bunch. Yeah, yeah, alternate persona of Greg or I something. Think the middle or, one. Was it the middle one? <coughs> yeah, one, one of them. But anyway, it's like he kind of threw all of that into this suit together and, and created Johnny Bravo. And he knew he wanted like an Elvis sounding kind of voice from the beginning. Because I remember at the audition, I was like, so do you want like Elvis? Or the end, <laughs> or, or, or you know, younger or older. He said, "Oh, oh, definitely younger." I was like, "Yes, oh, yes, definitely younger." No. So that's 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 how it came about. But it was, you know, he from the beginning he wanted to get Farrah Fawcett, he wanted to get Donny Osmond as the babysitter, <laughs> which is hysterical when you think about it. It's like, why, why did you want Donny Osmond to be my babysitter? I have no idea, but he, I, you'd have to ask him that. Today it might be more but, interesting, but I'm just saying, you know, other, you know. I'm today I'd be cancelled every week. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, no one picking up chicks now. <laughs> Not that, baby. That's crazy. You know, like, and I'd like to do that. I'd like to, like, re, re, you know, a, a, a re envisioning of Johnny Bravo where he gets cancelled every yes. week. Yes. <laughs> Get Peppy Lemieux. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. Well, so let me ask this. So we obviously uh, touched on the fact that uh, you're celebrating 30 years of Cartoon Network, Johnny Bravo, Courage the Coward the Dog. You have another accomplishment between the two of you that I wanted to uh, highlight. You both have now done, with your characters, Scooby-Doo crossovers. Right. Oh, right. 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 Yeah, we weren't even sure. I didn't even remember being on it <laughs> until you. Uh, wow. You mean Wait, the one we did? No, the one. No, no, no. The, you, you, no, no. You say Scooby Doo, Johnny. And so Johnny and Scooby. Oh, that's right. We, so we had initially. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember what year that was. But it was a while ago, right? Yeah. 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 yeah I know. Early 90s. Early yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah, I feel like 96 or something, 95 mm -hmm. or 96. And then last year, straight out of nowhere, it came out 20 years later. Crazy. Why? Why? Did, did you guys all know that that happened? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people didn't know because I'm going to go on record as this goes out. I don't care. <laughs> the Black Bully, Warner Brothers did a lousy job of promoting this thing, mm. this movie, <laughs> this crossover. Because they figured Scooby Doo doesn't need any help. Courage didn't need a little bit of help, you know. <laughs> Scooby Doo every, you know, every year he does a movie, forty-eight movies. So you know, but I felt not only that Courage needed help, but would it have been good to kind of really push this, the two dogs that Warner Brothers, by the way, owns Courage as well as Scooby Doo? Why wouldn't they have just gone out of their way to really promote it well? You know, I mean, they did a beautiful trailer, you know. And then they, uh, you know, for three months in advance, they, they, and that was what we got. I did a couple of online interviews, which nobody read or saw or anything. So like, a lot of people didn't even know. People come to these conventions, they say, I didn't even know that happened. And think fans right. encouraged. courage. Right, you know? yeah, so, yeah. Annoyed me. All right, Warner Brothers. <laughs> you messed that one up, but you, you, it's not too late. Promote it, get out there, do it now. <laughs> make, make a thing out of it now. It's a good thing. You got a good product here. <laughs> All right. But it, it probably speaks more to Scooby Doo yeah. than either of our shows in some ways because, I mean, Frank, 
Frank Welker was doing Scooby Doo in '69. Yeah. Is what he started, and he's still doing. So he he started as Fred. I've been there forever. He started as Fred. Now he is Fred and Scooby. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But he was amazing. Yeah. I, I wish that was, I was I was got to meet him. I would love to meet him. I understand he started doing he started to do the uh, convention. Of yeah. Years. Absolutely. It's beginning, I think, in, uh, I don't know, just beginning. I know he's going to be doing a fanboy in. Uh, oh, Fanboy Expo. In, yeah, in, uh, in uh, Indianapolis uh, in uh, November. Yeah. You know? So I hope he's doing more and I get to meet the guy. I'd love to see the guy. So talented. Yeah, we Legend. Legend. Just the best. Frank, if you're watching, buddy, we know you're getting started and we wish you a lot of luck. It's <laughs> <laughs> conventional. I'm just my monkey. <laughs> <laughs> just, let, me, let me ask you, um, uh, you obviously have voiced an iconic dog. Have you voiced an iconic dog in your career? Iconic animated dog. I don't think so. No? I don't remember any dogs. No speech dogs, no speech dogs. I did uh, Road Rovers, yeah, back in the day, where I did sort of a swords and everything. Uh, <laughs> What was it? And that was Warner Brothers? Yeah, that was Warner Brothers with, with Tress McNeil, Kevin Michael Richardson, Jess Harnell. Anybody remember Road Rovers? <laughs> it was an old one. Yeah, yeah. You were happy with Warner Brothers. So that, it was an iconic dog, though. I think so. It wasn't an iconic. I think so. We were all iconic dogs. <laughs> well, so, yeah. let me ask you. Wrong again. You, you, you've had your special now. You did Straight Out of Nowhere, which we're going to be promoting. It's going to be a cult hit. That you now hear. That's Straight Out of Nowhere! Uh, Johnny Bravo goes to Bollywood 2011, another film that did not get promoted, I think, all that well, because I tell people about this. I don't even know where it, where it went. Uh, I'm not even sure where it went. I would say HBO Max, but it depends. Uh, <laughs> I thought maybe just India alone. Well, I don't know. I don't think maybe it just went to India. So there was a, there's a Johnny Bravo Bollywood special. You had your Scooby Doo uh, Courage special. If you could have your drugs, what kind of special would you like to do now? Like if Johnny Bravo could have it. Musical or some sort. Be courage, the cowardly dog in India. Oh, okay. Uh, it could happen. Uh, no, the comedy I was just going to introduce is no longer relevant. Oh, <laughs> it had to be at that moment. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. It's no longer relevant. I just canceled my own comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to do it. All right. Uh, so, yeah. 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 What, what, so, if we had like a crossover? If you could do a Johnny Bravo. Crossover, either another episode crossing over with another show like Scooby, Johnny Bravo meets the Flintstones. Uh, all, only because uh, Frank would be part of both. Yeah, I think it'd be Johnny Bravo meets Curious George. Oh, oh, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. That'd and be maybe, amazing. maybe Scooby and George don't get along. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> and he'd play both. I love it. I love <laughs> it. How about you? Okay. I've already thought about this. And <laughs> interestingly enough, I was speaking to somebody about this just the other day. And the answer is um, Courage Meets the Universal Monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, the whole thing. Somehow getting woven into it, you know? Why not? Brilliant. Yeah, right. I think that's brilliant. Or, hear me out Courage Guy the Dog's Chorus Line. <laughs> what I did for love. Um, so I want to ask you both an industry question. You voice these iconic characters. You originated, uh, obviously, uh, Johnny Bravo had inspiration from Elvis. Was that an impersonation that you had worked on before the audition? Oh, yes. Yeah, you had done it. Yeah, yeah I had. I, I, I had done. There was uh, speaking of Broadway. There was uh, there was an old musical called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor, yeah. yeah. and I played the uh, Pharaoh, which is which is the eldest part of that. Oh, of wow. course. And that was back in like um, you were done maybe that was like 80, 84, maybe 85, something like that. Yeah, that's amazing. So I had to. Yeah, I had to work on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was live. There were people there. They had to work on it. So yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was, you know, I just wasn't sure how much of an impression he was gonna want. Right. 
They can speak through in the, it was like, it, you remember when I listened to the karate stuff towards the end? Like, <laughs> we want to incorporate that somehow. We want to put it on. <laughs> and, and it's all very fast. Everything has to be very quick. So I was like, okay. So it's like, you want, you want kind of a young version of what you want them to go, who? <laughs> and it just kind of grew from that. What, yeah. it's, uh, come on, round of applause for that. That's, uh, <laughs> Johnny Bravo Courage? Isn't that an old movie too? Johnny yeah. Bravo Courage? Yeah, I do Johnny Courage. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, speaking of film, you have a background as an actor on, yeah. on screen. Yeah. So, was this your first voiceover role? Had you done much voiceover before? Where did this happen? How did this, how did this happen? Well, well, as far as how, but well, you've got that story about my friend yeah, yeah. asking me that thing, so. But the lead up to your experience uh, as an the, actor. The, the, uh, it was just, you know, I, I was, I've done a lot of on stage stuff. I've done a lot of comedy and uh, could, 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 could you guess? <laughs> Listen, by the way, I'm not, I'm not asking that is he good, is he not good. I did it, first of all, if you're doing comedy, no no guarantee you are good. <laughs> what am I talking That's about? That's right. <laughs> I'm not quite clear. But anyway, the answer is, or the answer to what? I am bombing on this answer! <laughs> 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 No, no, no. But anyway, I did a lot of stage, and, and I've, interestingly enough, um, you know, I have done bit, bits and pieces on, on TV shows and stuff, and I continue, you know, Courage actually, when I got Courage, I actually got more work as a character actor on, you know, I started getting work in, in uh, you know, the Law and Order franchise, and, and the, I did Blacklist, and that sort of stuff, so um, independent films, and see, this is a segue into my own little, little shtick here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and right now, I'm actually, I just uh, produced and starred in a short film that is actually going around the festival circuit, and we've now gotten into 12 uh, uh, film festivals about Hunter S. Thompson, oh. where, where I actually play hunt a more voluminous version of Hunter S. Thompson. Um, and so it's, it's, it's doing very well. And so it's around and there will be at some point, it will be released, you know, onto YouTube. It's not gonna, believe me, it's not gonna be in the movie theaters because it's not even a short film in the movie theater. It doesn't usually happen that way, unless you're, you know, Robert De Niro. Even he doesn't get a short film done in the movie theaters. But it's gonna be, uh, I will be announcing on my page, uh, my pages, uh, when you can view it, if you so desire. It's called Hunter is Fucked. <laughs> Which is just fun, but the, but the C and the K, or the U and the C are hashtag out. You know, as if it's been censored. The Hunter is effed. And, the, and so, Look for it. And, you know, I'll be announcing it on my page and stuff after we do the magical thing. There it is. Oh, thank God I got that in. I had to get that in. <laughs> Wasn't Hunter always effed? I mean, he was it always effed. <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson yep. was insane. Those, yep. You know, an incredible, yeah. incredible journalist, off the wall, insane, uh, and prone to un unmanageable excess in all areas of his life. And yet, kind of a brilliant writer uh, and a very, very funny guy. Also. But you didn't have to take all the drugs for it. No, thank God. Yeah, that's good. No, I was good. Clean as a whistle, my friend. Clean as a whistle. Excellent. Is a whistle clean? What? I never heard that expression before. Why, why did that make any sense? I don't know. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No, you're totally fine. What's your Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. So um, we have just a little bit more time left, and I know some people have some questions. So if you have a question, go ahead and shoot your hand up. I'm going to try to grab a couple. Keep them concise, because obviously I've got a short attention span. Okay, I know I asked you a lot of questions. That you you certainly did! Believe it or not, I got another one. So what was... Um, what was kind of the inspiration for the, I mean, like, like the, the, his whole battle, like, what, like, what kind of direction? <laughs> I just, like, you know, I am, obviously, you can see, I'm 
kind of a hyper guy, and I, 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 I do tend to do that anyway. I'm a nifty sound, so I just took it to the nth degree <laughs> because I had to. As you said, you had to do Elvis. That's on, what they on, did. On Joseph and the Amazing Technical, right. the Dream right. Books. Yeah, I paid attention to you, my friend. Yeah, and, then, <laughs> and I just started doing it, and, and there was no inspiration behind it. But it could have been Ralph Cramden in The Honeymoon. Oh. <laughs> it could have been a little bit of that. Right. So. Oh, That's good. Excellent. OK, we're going to take another question. I'm going to go back. Let me know who the question is for, if it's for one other or all. Uh, this connects with the, the 30th anniversary of the Cartoon Network, where uh, the uh, original Popeye cartoons made by the Fleischer Studios were presented there. I work with the Fleischer, we're restoring the Betty Boop cartoons, all this stuff that's been involved. So I was just curious, were you guys fans of Fleischer Studios and their cartoons growing up? Oh yeah, love Popeye. Love Popeye. Love, love Popeye. Popeye. My favorite thing, my favorite thing was, was whenever Popeye would go, uh, he would say, Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that sweet thing. It's clean. Clean? <laughs> I was like, I think Billy West got to do that for a little while, didn't he? Yes, he did. I mean, and, which was a blast, you know? I, I came out on a few of those, but, you know, that's so great to be able to re, you know, live your childhood cartoons, and, and I think they did a great job of that. But I do too. Yeah, Fleischer, I, I mean, he did so many amazing things. With the voices on them, they did the animation first and did the, the voices after. Have you guys ever done anything like that? Uh, when, you know, usually they don't do it that way, right? Because they're able to actually stretch the sound and fit it to the animation, right? right? right. Which is a much more efficient way of doing it. But when I had to go in for, like, the current Scooby movie, for instance, right? They had me do some uh, ADR, some pickups, and so when I and they wanted me to add things to sections that I had not done. So they were also they took out a take, and I had to match the take to the thing. Of course, the technology now is better. They're still able to stretch it and fit it in, but it's, so it's not really that demanding if you get it close. It's no problem where it's in the old days, you had to keep trying, oh shoot, that was out of sync. Do it again, do it again, right? It was, that was much more of that. Right? Yeah, and I, I've, I've done a few things where we had to match to, uh, like after, um, what was the big Miyazaki movie? It was Spirit. Right? Yeah, we, all you do is, you were in Spirited Away? I, I wasn't in Spirited Away, but they re-released a lot of his oh, yeah. stuff from the 80s. <laughs> and translated and so we came in and, and, and basically just dubbed like the whole movie. I think you were in Nausicaa. I and only know that because I just realized yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Valley, like, it, it was literally when the pigs can fly, that yeah. whole thing, you know, we did a bunch of that stuff. Yeah. So, excellent. Yeah. Well, so yeah, your question, uh, great question. For those who don't know, a lot of the flesh of cartoons were done in ADR. Uh, Popeye famously, uh, the original voice actor had to stop because it was so painful for his voice, he actually sounded that way. Oh, wow. So Jack Mercer came in, the second actor, <laughs> and what he did was, oh, honey. yeah, right. So that second voice you're talking about, that that was him in ADR going against the lip flaps, oh. creating another voice saying, "Well, see, he's got the pipe there, so he's going to put another voice there." Oh, that's right. great. Right. Have right. either of you ever experienced that kind of fatigue, especially I imagine with courage? Does it hurt your voice at all? <laughs> you bet. You're hearing me now, even even at this convention. Yeah. And I'm, I'm doing more screaming at this convention, more loud, rage yes, yeah. behavior, you know, than, than I even did in, in the studio. So yeah, it does take a toll, but I seem to have, uh, somebody said I have vocal cords of steel, because it kind of comes <laughs> up pretty quickly and I'm back in business. I always had this scratchy voice anyway. Yeah, so I, this I've got a little husk. Yeah. Yeah. A little husk? Um, I got a little husk. You would like to see it? <laughs> a little husk. I got a lot of husks. <laughs> and there are people that have said, in a sense, I am a husk of what I once was. But that's, that's a more depressing yeah. discussion. We'll, we'll, leave it. we'll leave that for another day. And I, I find it easier if it's higher, higher tones. Yeah. You know, like staying down in the lower Huskier tones haven't been done in here for a long time. Oh, and, you can use your... Pushing it, you know, it, that, that's tough. Yeah. See, not for me. Not for me. For some weird reason, it gives me almost a little relief. 
Because they're up here. And yes, it's a little scratchy, but a lot of my head voice. You know, I'm, you know, I'm able to kind of cheat with head voice just a little bit. You right, know? right. That's what I'm saying. Like the higher stuff is easier for me. Oh, oh that's it's the lower. Yeah, the lower stuff. So that is really what you meant. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I wasn't paying attention properly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry darling. I'm sorry. Well, we're, we're going to have to wrap up here, but I want to go ahead and remind everyone that uh, you're both going to be signing for today. Uh, you're out there on the floor. Uh, if you have questions and you want to ask any more uh, questions about their characters and their amazing careers, they're going to be here. Yeah, come over, talk, you can talk, you can say hello, you can ask me a question. You don't have to really just come over and say hello. Right? And uh, I yeah, know yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say he feels the same way. Yes, because we're, 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 we're working on a musical together, so <laughs> yes, we're, we're going to be working on that. Johnny Curtis. So, yeah, Johnny Curtis. <laughs> uh, any advice just to, 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 to leave us on? Um, to anyone who wants to do what you do, to anyone who wants to one day voice the iconic character 30 years later that people are gathering, what advice keep, they, you keep on Keep on working on what you're doing and don't give up because. I mean, they, uh, Mr. Bowser can tell you, you know, I remember doing a couple of first shows with him and, and going, this guy's, you know, he's got so much talent. That's right, Doug. Yeah. Oh. And look at him now. Get to know me. <laughs> so, you know, that's, and that's, that's how it goes. It's like if it's something you believe in and you love doing. I mean, I, I seriously didn't think anybody would pay me for doing this, actually. I just, I did it anyway. I just grew up and, and, and thought, this is what all the kids do. And then I'm going to talk like Johnny Carson and so on. I would, first of all, I echo all of that, everything that you just said. But in addition, I would also say that um, a lot of people come up to me and say, well, you know, I want to be in voiceovers. And the first thing I ask them is, have you ever acted before? And usually they say, no, not, not really. And I go, okay, so before you say I want to go into voiceovers, maybe try your hand in actually acting a little bit, which you, you know, take an acting class. Work on some stuff so you actually get familiar with this idea of creating something, you know, uh, you know, re doing some sort of reality under imaginary circumstances, as uh, Uta Hagen said. Uh, and so, you know, try a little bit of that. And then I also say, if you want to just start off on some stuff, like rehearse, like look at stuff, try to learn from it. Read, uh, watch things that they do on YouTube, bits and pieces of animation, or even commercials, and just try to, uh, like when you see him on there, try to imitate him. Try to do what he does. And then, I, right, do what this guy does. Honestly, I'm joking, but actually, I'm actually not joking. No, but, got, uh, we all but, but you do that, and I think when you do that, you know, I think you'll start to get this idea that actually maybe you do belong in voiceovers. Then you can make a reel, and you know, and then you can start sending to agents and casting directors. It's a very hard thing, but you know, get get take it seriously. Do the work that you need to do. That's why everybody talks to Marie so much. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves the room, then we all go. We all. Go. See, we're all going to talk like we're yeah. So we do each other for it. I, absolutely. Big bar on steel. And I will say, uh, you know, let's give a round of applause to our guests today.
Yeah. All right, man. Good to see you guys. Very good. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessieheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned.